Okay, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about conditional statements in C Sharp. So, first thing I want to do is open up my intro script. And since I didn't have Visual Studio open, it's going to take just a minute. I will meet you right back here. Okay, so we've kind of already talked about one type of conditional statement, and that's the if statement. However, there's a few more that get used very commonly in C Sharp. Uh, what I'd like to do first is show you the if-else statement. So we have all of our little variables here that we've been messing around with. So we've got if display info is true, uh, I'm going to make that true by default. But I think the editor is still going to override me on that. And I'm going to say, uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave that or. So if you're looking for an if statement, just to cover this a bit more in depth, an if statement is always followed by a value that is either true or false. So this whole thing in parentheses has one value, true or false. Since it's an or statement, if one of these is true, the whole thing is true, meaning everything in parentheses is true. If um, both of these are false, that's the only time the whole thing is false. So this has a Boolean value, a true or false value. Uh, between these two. Now if it were an AND in between them, they would both need to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. If one of them is false, the whole thing is false. So if statements are always followed by something that needs to be true or false, and that's true in every programming language I've, I've dealt with, whether the syntax is different. Uh, what I want to do here is I'm just going to do a quick little uh, debug.log and I'm going to call this option one. Now if statements can be followed by an else statement, meaning if it runs through the code. Okay, uh, sorry about that abrupt cut. So what the else statement does is as the uh, program is going through the script, it uh, executes everything in the order that it comes to it. So it'll execute the if statement, it'll check to see if this condition is true. If it's a straight else statement, if this condition is not true in any way, shape, or form, it will execute whatever comes after the else block. So for example, if I do else, and I'm going to do debug.log option 2. So if both the display info isn't true and the price is not greater than 11.5, then it's going to display option two. If one of those is true, it'll display option one. But there'll be no situation where it doesn't display one or two because as it's going through here, it is always going to uh, access at either the first part of this or the second part. Uh, that's what if else does. So if you want to make sure that your code is always executing something, one thing or another, then you want to use an if else block. So for example here, if I just pop back into Unity, once this is done compiling, and hit play, um, we'll see option one. And option one is there because the first condition was true. If I go to my game manager here, um, and oops, sorry, that's not what I meant. Um, so let's make the price greater than 11.5. Yep, it is. And let's make display info. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so let's actually make the price uh, less than 11.5. Let's just make it one. So now if I hit play, because both of those two conditions for the or statement are false, it's going to display option two. Now there's another way that you can structure um, an if statement and that's using something called if, else if, and then possibly an else at the end. So else if is going to require another statement inside these uh, parentheses that's either true or false. So in this example, um, I'm going to say game double equal to half-life. So now it's if this uh, and if that's not true, then it will check the second one, but it will only check the second one if the first thing is false. Um, so let's take a look here. So I want to have, make sure that both of those are going to be true, just to kind of demonstrate what I'm going to show you guys here. So I'm going to change the game back to Half-Life as soon as it's done compiling. Um, I'm going to make my price 12, so it's greater than 11.5. Now in this case, both 
the else if condition is true. It is true that the game is equal to half-life. And the if condition is also true, meaning that uh, one of these two is true. Now, in this case, you would think that it would display both of them, both option one and option two. But it's not going to, because as soon as it reaches something in that block of code that's true, it's done. It's going to exit the block entirely and not read the rest of it. So if we look here, we just have option one, no option two, even though option two is true. Um, that's one thing that you want. If you want only one thing to happen, but you know that there are situations where it could meet many of the conditions, then you want to use an if, else if. And it uh, executes those in order from top to bottom. So if the first thing is true, it's going to execute that and exit the, the block of code. If the second thing is true, it'll do that and exit without looking at the third, fourth, or fifth. Now you can structure these with as many else ifs as you want. You can make a hundred else ifs. Um, it's not very efficient to do it that way, but it's absolutely something you can do. And now there's if else if we can also add an else at the end. And the else is to grab every other possible condition. So it will always execute something from this block of code. If you leave that out, it might not execute anything from that block of code. So I'm just going to do debug.log option three. So it's going to go through here. Uh, if option one isn't true, it's going to check option two. If option two is also not true, then no matter what, it's going to execute option three. So option three gets executed if one and two both are not true, but every time it goes through this block of code, it will always execute something, either the first, second, and if not either of those, then the third. If it executes the first, it ignores the last two. If it executes the second, it ignores the third. And if the first two don't get executed, the third one does. So yeah, let's go back into Unity and let's see this in practice. So I'm gonna change the name of the game again, and I'm gonna make the price something less than 1150. Um, so when I hit play, I should see it say option three. And that's because uh, the first and second options weren't true and it didn't say anything, why not? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm back, I forgot to save my script. So um, there we go, option three. Now, there's another way that you can create conditional statements other than this if, else, if, else uh, way. This is good uh, for small things that you want to do. However, once you're doing more than, say, three or four things, it's kind of inefficient to write this all out, and it gets very difficult to read. Um, so there's another method that we can do if we're going to have multiple different conditions we want to test on. So I'm going to delete all of this here, and we're going to talk about a switch statement. So um, we have our price here, uh, 11.5. I'm going to create a switch. And the switch statement is going to be based on price. So a switch statement is going to take certain cases into account. And based on which of those cases are true, it's going to execute some code. So my first case, I'm going to call 11.5. And the syntax behind a switch, uh, switch statement is a little different than what you're used to, especially with if and else if. Um, you switch, and then you have whatever your condition is inside of parentheses, and then inside of braces, you're going to add all your cases. But your case is going to be indented. You have whatever your number is. Uh, let's make that 11.5f. And then you follow it by a colon. And the colon is there uh, to say what is part of that case. What are we going to do if this case is true? So I'm going to debug.log1, just one. In a switch statement, also, at the end of every case, you have to tell it to break out of the block of code. Otherwise, it'll continue on doing everything in that block of code. So at the end of each case, you need to add a break statement. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I bet it doesn't like switching on price because price is a float, but let's double check here. 
<laughs> yep. Okay, so I had forgotten about this. You can only switch if it's an integer, a boolean, or a character. So I'm going to change my value for price into an integer. And I'm going to change it from 11.5f to, let's say, 2. I don't have to add an i after it because it's an integer value. And now instead of this being 11.5, this is going to be case 1. Meaning if it's equal to 1. And now down here, I'm going to do case 2. And it automatically re-indents where it should be. Debug.log 2 break and then you want to have whenever you're doing a switch statement you always want to have a default case which is what to do if none of these are met and in my default here I'm gonna say debug.log actually we'll call this default uh, okay so if one is true it'll do that if two is true it'll do that and if neither of those two are true, but it's still going through this block of code, it'll do the default thing. So this functions similar to an else. Um, I could leave it out. So if I comment out what's here, you'll see that Visual Studio will kind of gray out the default because it's redundant. You don't need to have that there. It'll just automatically go past it because you're essentially not doing anything in it. But so let me save here. I'm gonna pop back into Unity right now. It's going to think and change my value for price to 2. So if I hit play, I should see a 2. And there we go. If I change this from 2 to, say, 11 and hit play, I should see default. And if I change it back to just plain 1 and hit play, I'll see 1. So those are the two main ways of creating conditionals inside C-sharp. One is with if, else, if, else blocks of code, and the other is using a switch statement. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. I have my Discord link down below that you can check out. And uh, yeah, have yourself a wonderful day.